So let's talk about the video production checklist. This checklist is meant to be done for any single video that you do. This checklist accompanies that video. So essentially, you know exactly what to do next and you stay on track. As you start producing videos on a regular basis, you'll probably have a little smaller checklist like I do, at least two or three bullet points to keep you focused as to what you know the next steps are to do. But especially when you're starting out and if you have different team members that you're working with, and especially if you have more than five, 10, 20, 30 videos that you're working on, which is very likely in today's kind of business, you want to know where the different steps are. So this is based on a pre-production, production post, the three stages of regular videos. And let's take a look at uh, each of uh, the stages that we have broken out here. By all means, I left this in a Word document. Uh, I typically have mine in a project management tool, uh, an online tool, so please copy and paste this into whatever you wanna use, even Excel. But it just allows you to check off, the, has this been done, has this been done, has this been done? So if you are working on multiple videos, you gotta go, right, this is the next step that you need to accomplish, all right? So let's talk about pre-production. Essentially, there's three things happening here. One, you got the kickoff call or the meeting, then you have the time in the meeting to talk about the content or create the content inside the video for the video. And of course, then you have in the pre-production stage, hey, where are you gonna shoot it? Right, like I'm right now in a nice boardroom, so that would be a location, scouting a location. So in the kickoff call in the meeting, you're really looking at going, hey, can we book the room or find the place to shoot the videos? You know, when are we gonna talk about the content that's in there? When is the actual recording day, right? When people are available to do it. And if it's the first time working on it and it's a product or a customer, is there any branding guidelines or assets or pictures that we need that make up the video? The second takeoff is basically, hey, did the content call happen, right? Did we actually sit down and talk about what we're gonna talk about inside the video and the scouting location? Is the room like this one have good natural light for me to shoot it? Again, this is a simple checklist that you basically each video has you can go through and go tick, tick, tick. You can add an extra layer in here if you have a team members. I sometimes, our team did that when we work with customers and say, hey, did we email the customer the next steps or any things like booking the call or booking the calendar invite. Um, if you have that in there, it's a good idea if you have multiple people working on the project. Let's move to the actual production stage. So in the production stage, well, we really got four things. One, you gotta capture the video, right? Video capture there's an interview or there's any kind of B-roll footage, hey, did you do that step? Second one is, did you receive the footage, right? Did you get the footage from the phone? <laughs> You'd be surprised sometimes we use somebody else's phone and they run off, you're like, um, hang on a second, we need that footage to work with. Did you send the assets to the editor or if there's somebody on your team that you're uh, working with to do the edits, the simple edits, or if you're doing them yourselves, did you get them? and are they organized in the appropriate folder with the appropriate names? This is a key one too. Remember lots of things, video tends to take a little bit of space, so it's really good habit to get into to make sure you organize everything. And does the editor know the fees or the pricing structure, right? Did you talk to them about that, that there's no miscommunication uh, on the deliverables? And pretty much this happens just in the actual production um, stage. Now, let's move into the post-production, which is typically where most of the checkboxes align. All right, let's take a look at the post-production. Now, don't panic, it looks like there's a lot of checkboxes here, but they're quite simple steps. It's just designed to make sure you know exactly which um, area you left off and what's to do next. And some of these are really simple to do, but it's just a good idea um, to get in the habit of because you are moving with video assets. The first thing is editor combines into what's called a rough cut. A rough cut is when you take the pieces together, you glue them, you cut out the bad parts, and now you have a rough cut of a video to look at. Then what you need to do is you need to take it and put it somewhere. Uh, for others to look at it, right? Sometimes you can take the rough cut and upload it to YouTube so you can share it and people can look at it and provide feedback. I use a tool called Vimeo, which is super awesome to provide feedback. We'll talk about that later on. 
Then you need to plan out what's the, like the keywording is, is planning some of the creative edits. Like if there are product screenshots or some B-roll that you took, how are you gonna combine those, right? Kind of that creative direction, not too complicated, but that creative direction you're gonna put in there. So that is a step, has that been done? Then you need to send that to the editor or the team that's gonna be editing them so they know exactly what they need to provide. And then you get the actual first video, the first version back for you to look at and you need to review it with the people that need to provide their feedback, right? So after that is done, then again, you need to send that back to the editor or back to the person that is gonna be doing the edits to make and create the feedback. Well, at this point, now you have a, actually a pretty good version of the final video that's coming out. It's been rough cut, all the little creative things have been put in there and you got a pretty good video that you're looking at. This is the next step is, well, let's take those and let's create a version two and let's get that back into the editing for the final feedback. So once that information has been done, has that been uh, approved by the team to go, hey, all of the editing that we wanted to get done has been done and now the video can be finalized. This is the biggest thing I can tell you. A lot of companies go, well, we could change this and we could change that and we could change this. But every time you change something, you now have to tell the editor or tell the editing person to do that. They have to make the changes. They have to send you another copy that you need to look at and the whole cycle continues. So if you keep adding steps in the editing process, this sheet just keeps on growing. And this is the typical process, uh, problem where people get caught in the never ending loop of edits. So I highly encourage you to be very efficient, very quick, is to minimize those down to two because 90% is good enough and the last 10% is gonna kill you. The last step that we have here is move a copy of the final video to a company folder somewhere where you back it up. Quite often you'll find it. Remember that video we did like six to eight months ago? Does anybody have any idea where it is? If you have a, you know, uh, a, um, a collective kind of one folder where all the masters and while the final videos are properly named, it's a really good habit to get into that you always know you can go back to it and find the final uh, file to do it. So here is a simple checklist that you can use in your project management folder in Excel spreadsheet, doesn't matter what it is, just to give yourself and know exactly where the stage of that video is to keep you organized or anybody else. It's a beautiful way to keep everybody on track. Um, and I do this, especially for myself when I create a ton of training content and I got you know, 30, 40 videos to create. I'm like, what did I do with that video and what stage it is at? And it's a great way to stay on track and efficient.